Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of that celebrity interview. Dr. Witten. Thank you so much, Dr. Witten, Sherney, and Casey. Thank you for being here. I'm in Dallas, Texas, and I talk to people all over the nation on an FM, social media, and a streaming platform. You guys know how technology works. I'm so glad to talk with you guys because we've got a great audience. I haven't heard a lot of conversation lately about sickle cell, Dr. Witten, Sherney, and this is a, a disease that people live with every day. First, before we begin, could you tell us really, give us a synopsis version of what sickle cell is? Yes, um, you know, I do want to mention that this is such a, an appropriate time to be having this conversation because September is Sickle Cell Awareness Month. So thank you for having us on. You know, sickle cell disease is a blood disease. It's a disease of the red blood cells. And basically the red blood cells take on an unusual shape. They're sticky, they're fragile, they break down early. That causes the anemia, but the stickiness is what causes blockage in the blood vessels. And when you have blocked blood vessels, you have you stop the flow of oxygen and that causes pain. Pain is the hallmark of sickle cell disease. And then in addition to that, when certain organs in the body don't get enough oxygen, that can cause organ damage. So you're right, it's a lifelong illness. It's a quite challenging illness to live with. You're a pediatrician. Tell me, are certain kids affected by this or certain kids of certain race? Tell us about that. Okay, so what, what happens is Sickle cell disease is a genetic disease. You get it from your parents, right? And if you get two sickle genes, then you have the, the disease, but if you just get one, you have the trait. And having sickle cell trait protects you from malaria. So you see it in people that come from areas where malaria was a problem. And so malaria is not a problem in the United States, but we see it here predominantly in African Americans because we uh, because of the slave trade. So we our genes are a lot of them are West African. So when they brought us over here on in, on those ships, then we brought our sickle cell genes with us. So that's why you see sickle cell disease in African Americans in this country. Thank you so much for that understanding. Now, I know you brought a friend, KC, with you. KC, I think you can give us a personal view, and you're very young. Uh, tell us about your interactions with sickle cell. Oh, so... Um, I think Casey might be having a little audio issues and I did get to know Casey a little bit and I know that um you know when she she had to transition herself so when when she went off to college it you know she she had a good transition but it was kind of like she got so excited about all of the things that were going on in college that she started to not pay so, such good attention to her health, you know? And so then she found herself in the hospital. And so then she had a wake up call and she said, oh, I've got to do something different here. And so when she started paying more attention to her health and making sure that she was hydrated and making sure that she was relieving her stress, then things got better. So I think that we can definitely say that Casey is a, a success story. And now she is a middle school teacher and very active. And I think we have her back now. Yes, hi. Did I do okay, you. Casey? <laughs> yes, nailed it. <laughs> All right. All right. Casey, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we were talking, the doctor so eloquently spoke of your uh, particular interactions with uh, the disease, sickle cell. Uh, you're the face of a lot of people. They're teachers, they're young people, they're going back to school. What advice would you give young people? today battling anything from sickle cell to other COVID-19. Absolutely. I definitely think taking a front seat to your health care is very, very vital, um, particularly as it pertains to sickle cell hydration and rest, keeping your stress levels low, as well as having a great support system around you with your doctors, with your family and your friends. I was fortunate enough to be part of a clinical trial when I was younger and it, the medication has continued to help me today. And, you know, part of that was being in contact with my doctor and every single patient's journey is different. So it's really, really important that you talk to your doctor about what's best for you. But first and foremost, you know, taking a front seat to your health care and making sure you prioritize yourself and your health. For my audience listening, they may not have sickle cell, but maybe their child or their grandchild, something like that. Is there a place online, Casey, that they can go? Yes, absolutely. SickleCellSpeaks.com and also SickleCellDisease.org are two different websites that are really helpful on information about sickle cell as well as this transition period. Thank you so much. And doctor, 
let me ask you this as I wrap up. You know, uh, this is a disease. Does it affect mostly young people, or there is no uh, discrimination in who it affects? Oh, oh, it, it's a lifelong disease. You're born with it. And in fact, we have every baby born in the country is tested for sickle cell disease at birth. So you're born with it and you keep it, okay? But one of the things I really wanted to mention is that we're partnering with um, Global Blood Therapeutics um, to raise awareness about sickle cell disease, but also to talk about a medication, Oxbrita, which is the first FDA approved medication that actually attacks sickle cell disease at its root cause. When you ask me about what is sickle cell disease, it's a disease of the red blood cells. And what, um, Ox what this medication does is it stops the red blood cell from taking on that sickle shape. So that really is a, a way to effectively help people with the illness. Um, all medications have side effects, but um, what we've seen most commonly with this medication is loose stools. And I just wanna make the point that it's important as you transition that you take all of your regular medications, that you know what they're for, you know what dose you're on, and, and that you talk to your doctor about what's best for you. Every individual with sickle cell disease is different, so we have to have a unique approach to everyone's care. And those people wanting to maybe get in on a trial or, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, write in and say they can't afford their medications. Is there any help for them? Yes, and that kind of information, you can go to clinicaltrials.gov and find information about clinical trials. You can also reach out to local community-based organizations, and you can once again go to the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America's website sicklecelldisease.org and just click on clinical trials and get lots of information. Doctor, I want to thank you and I want to thank KC for being my guest here on the Bounder BB Show. You're speaking to a great audience and I'm sure this resonates with them. Be healthy and be well. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thanks. My phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com. Hi, I'm Bounder Beebe, host of the Bounder Beebe Show. I have used Credit Help USA, the credit restoration company that's bonded and state certified. When you become a client of Credit Help USA, you become eligible for a set of stainless steel cookware from Credit Help USA and the Bounder Beebe Show. Get your credit straight today. Visit credithelptx.com, click on the Valder BB Show icon, and get started living life divinely. <music>